Hi everyone. Today we're going to do question number 337, house robbers number 3. So within the past week I've done house robber number 1 and I've done house robber number 2. Uh, this is the third iteration of the same problem, however with a slight little twist. I thought this would be a very interesting one to do because it shows the evolution of how an easy problem, house robber number 1, can evolve to something like house robber number 3. These are, like I said before, uh, very common for interview uh, interviewers to ask you. Uh, they may start you off with something like easy, as in house hour number one, and they may evolve you to like go to number two or number three different version. So what we're going to do first is read the question, and then because this one's a little bit more complicated when we read it, I'm going to try to translate that to something that we can actually understand, um, and then draw a picture to show what the question is really asking for and maybe come up with the equation or a potential solution from that picture. Um, and then finally, we will code the solution. Um, key part to note is that in, for any type of these tree-like questions, drawing is your best friend, okay? So stay tuned. All right, so let's read the question. The thief has found himself a new place for his thievery again. There is only one entrance in this area, called the root. Beside root, each house has one and only one parent house. Okay. After a house, I'm sorry, after a tour, the small thief realized that all houses in this place form a binary tree. Man, some of these questions really trigger me because they're trying really hard to butter up a story, but then yet they use terms like binary tree and root. Come on, man, you could come up with a better thing. But anyways, let's continue to read. It will automatically contact the police if two directionally linked houses were broken into on the same night. All right, determine the maximum amount of money the thief can rob tonight without alerting the police. All right, so... After reading that, I'm not sure about you, but I got confused, right? So, but what this question really is just asking for is this. All right, so I'm a thief, right? Uh, and it's like the similar problems that you had before where, you know, uh, robber, uh, house robber number one, we talked about, you know, you have a linear street, right? Uh, where you can't rob your neighbors, otherwise it triggers the police. And then for house robber number two, it's all about, okay, you're in a circle, you know, just make sure you don't do uh, your neighbor and your, and your last one together because they're looked, um, linked up, right? But for this one, our house robber number three, all we really, the, the real condition is that, hey, if I rob one node, I cannot rob the, my little two children. That's it. Or if I decide to not rob my current node, I should be able to rob all my other children or whatever combination of them, right? So let's look at a picture uh, and get an actual example to see uh, so we can better understand this problem. Okay, let's start with an example. I'm gonna create a uh, very simple tree first, which is gonna be something like, okay, we start off with three, you know, um, and you have two branches here called 12 and four, right? And then you have another two down here, right? We can say one, two, and one here, and it's like 17 and two, as an example, right? So the question is, from this example, um, how do I find uh, the maximum amount of dollars I can get, and what is the most optimal way to, to rob this place, right? So if we think about it, okay, when we're in the first node, uh, if we just eyeball this really easily, um, given the condition of the two rules, right? Number one rule is, you know, if I decide to rob, that also means I cannot rob, or I'll just say, uh, cannot rob children. All right, so that's one condition, right? If I choose to rob um, my current node, I can't rob the children because that's gonna trigger the police. Or the second one would be, all right, I don't rob, but you know, I can get any type of combo of children, right? So in this case, it's like, do I want to rob no number three? Because I'm only going to get three bucks. Probably not, right? Um, if we look down here, well, this child seems pretty rich. And this one's all right, you know? And if we go down here and look at these other children, all right. 
Uh, these look, oh, whoa, look at this one right here, right? So if we look at it, the most optimal way to actually get it without, you know, putting an algorithm would be this 12, robbing this one, and robbing this one, right? Because, hey, if I rob this, I'm not robbing any of my children, right? If I rob this, well, I don't have any children to not rob. I cannot, I cannot rob this number because, you know, it's attached to this particular children already. I cannot rob this because it attached to this children. So if we eyeball things uh, of the solution, um, it will be 12 and 17. But the question is, like, how did I even come up with this solution, right? Well, let's see if we can break this down into more smaller steps. You know how I mentioned that effectively on each node you have to think about, you have two decisions to make right you have to make a decision of hey am i gonna rob it or if i am i not am i not gonna rob it right M remember in house robber number one uh we always use you know a little bit of dynamic programming to or the greedy method to track um as we make those decisions what my total sum would be right this is exactly the same but we just have a little bit more uh, options to choose from because we're dealing with a binary tree, right? So what do I mean by that is that, okay, well, if you see any tree structure type of thing, you may want to think about, okay, maybe apply some sort of uh, recursive, you know, recursive or iterative way to look through each node and make a decision, right? Up to a point where, you know, you reach to a node where it's going to be null, right? And then you return something back. Right. In our case, if we if we go traverse down, um, death first search, go traverse traverse, you hit to one, and you keep going down to the, to when the childrens are pretty much at zero zero. Right. Over here, um, when we get hit to this point when the node is actually at null, what do we actually want to return back to the people? Right. Well, at that situation, uh, we're not we can't rob anything, and we can't you know ha this one doesn't have any children at all. So my decision at this particular point, right is effectively, you know, this is, I'm going to use R to depict robbing and N as in not, not robbing. Effectively, you know, I'm not getting any money. I'm not making any bank, right? So therefore, all right, cool. I'm not making any bank. Same case for here. I'm not making any bank in here, right? Rob and not rob, right? But when we're in this node, what kind of decision we need to make, right? We need to make, all right, well, should I rob my number one? Right. If I rob this particular house, what do we do? Right. If I rob it, then um, let's just say, OK, if I rob it, then I'm going to take my one. Right. But I also have to make sure that, OK, well, I'm not robbing my left side of stuff and my right side stuff. Right. So I have to make sure I'm not robbing. So which is this? I need to make sure I'm not doing these two. Right. So I'm going to go like not left plus not right. OK, so. Remember this, remember this first index, we're just using it as a way to store our results of robbing, right? So in here, we decide to rob. So therefore, our rob will be the value that is here, but also making sure that we don't capture the, the other guys right here, right? But if we decide not to rob, right, what happens? We basically need to see all combinations of the things below here, right? Um, if I decide to rob, and rob or rob not rob and so on and so forth to i'm gonna say r r rob the left side um but not rob the right side and so on and so forth over here oh, i'm running out of space that effectively will give us another two value here so when we go up to this next value we have to choose well well what's my maximum should i rob my thing here which is going to set me to 12 or should I get some sort of combination of, you know, this one with all these other elements or the two, all the other elements. In our case, the 12 will win, right? So you always want to put like some sort of, you know, uh, math.max to see whether or not these two uh, comparing the two options, right? I know it's a little bit of a chicken scratch here, you know, um, but hopefully you understand. We're going to go jump into some code um, and then I'll explain a little bit more detail. Um, but however, the key takeaway from all of this is to understand that, hey, if we could break this problem into more smaller sub problems, and then from that sub problem, we have to think about, all right, what would be our decisions, right, to do on that sub problem? Um, and what is our exit condition, right? If we could think about those, 
then we could start thinking about, all right, well, it's a tree. It might do some sort of recurrence of nature. What is our exit condition at each node or what do we do at each node? Um, and then from that point, um, you could probably come up with a solution that is, you know, good for this problem. All right. So let's look at this problem and start creating the solution. All right. Well, one of the things that I would like to do um, is to maybe have some sort of helper function to start this recursive call. So I'm going to go and uh, call this a function. I'm going to make it a decision, right? I need to make a decision when you give me a node, right? I'm giving you a node and I better make a decision from that node. Okay, cool. So what do we do after that, right? So what I'm going to do is um, get some sort of exit condition as well, right? So if my node that you're passing down, right, is not truthy, so meaning that it doesn't exist, then I'm going to return my decisions already, which is going to be if I rob it because I have nothing to rob, it's going to be zero. And if I don't rob it, it's also going to be zero, right? That's going to return back to your next level of your call stack. All right, cool. So what do we need to create here? We need to create basically the um, if I decide to rob my left, right? And I decide on my left node to not rob, right? So how am I going to populate this? I'm going to actually populate it by passing in my decision on my node dot left. So I'm going to pass my leftmost node into this decision tree and then tell it to like, okay, well, should I rob this segment or not? Right? And then I'm going to set my right side, let my right rob and right not rob. Okay. And this will be equal to my decision at node dot right. Cool. So basically I'm starting off two little call stacks in here. That's great. Um, and then what we, what do we actually want to do with this? Right? Well, we want to decide, I'm going to create a variable for this. So let's say my Rob decision, a, a Rob D I'll call it Rob D. Right. That will be essentially I'm going to say like, okay, I'm going to Rob um, decision and it's going to be, um, effectively my node dot value, right? My current value, if I decide to wrap that node, plus I have to ensure that I'm not robbing my left, uh, child. And also I'm not robbing my right one either, right? Not cool. So that's effectively my robbing decision. Well, how about the not robbing decision, right? Let not rob decision. So what is this? So in this one, we need to know what is the maximum max, not max of all of the combinations you can have, right? So the combinations you could have right now, if you're sitting on a node would be, well, I've decided to left rob the left person, right? Plus I'm going to also rob the right person, the right child, or I decide to my left will, I'll still rob it. Right. But my right, I'm not going to rob it. All right, um, let me add this in here. Or another combo would be my left, I'm not robbing, right? Uh, plus my right, right, not robbing, right? Or I plus the combo of my left, not robbing, plus right, I'm gonna rob. Okay, cool. So that's it's actually my two decisions, right? So what do I have to return back? I'm returning back the Rob D and the not Rob decision, right? I'm, per, I'm returning this back every time we call on each node and making this decision. And at the end, um, all I really need to do is return, um, return my math dot max of my decision given the node root node, right? And because we have two elements we're passing back, we don't know which one's higher. We're going to spread it. So it's going to be giving us this Rob and not Rob down here. And that should solve our problem. Let's try running it. Great. Cool. So 92% and hundred percent saved. So that's pretty much it. I know a lot of these questions may appear difficult at first when you read it. Um, but there's quite a bit of similarities in this question in all three questions, we still use dynamic programming. Um, but just a little slight twist to it, right? 
because for house robber number one we used a dynamic programming of length of the same size of the straight away uh, house on the second one because of the interconnectivity of the um, if the first house and last house we used two different like uh, separate uh, dynamic programming caches or, or arrays or whatnot but in this case all we really need to do is know like the child and, and, and parent relationship all right that's all we need to store so hopefully this helps you out uh, I'm gonna try to also continue to do these questions more and more just to help you guys out um, if you guys like these type of stuff feel free to subscribe hit that bell for a notification and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video see ya